Hi guys, welcome to another video from Little to Simple. It's true that as content creators on YouTube, we are always in search of clickbaity title. But this was not the case with the title of this video and independent of how it looks on the surface and despite the fact that Apple and Meta operate in completely different niches with Apple primarily being a hardware and services business and Meta being a social networking company and that is trying hard to expand into the metaverse. The paths of these two companies cross multiple times in the last few years Years, and every time their paths crossed, it didn't end well for Meta. And this time around, Apple did something which challenges the very purpose or reason for which Mark Zuckerberg renamed Facebook as Meta and pushed them into an existential crisis of sorts. What makes this whole situation interesting is the fact that what's just an entry into another product category for Apple has turned into a struggle for existence for Meta. Hope you're sold on the premise of this video by now, so sit back relax and join us on this interesting and one-of-a-kind ride. The Root Cause The title of this section might have sounded obvious to those of you who have heard of this quote about the free-to-use online services companies. And it goes something like this. If you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. Any online service which is free to use has only one way to generate revenue and that is to collect the user data and then use it for targeting ads. Of course, what we just explained is an overly simplified version, but at a broader level, this is how free-to-use online services make money. There is one problem with this business model. As per the privacy laws that are in force in most countries, any company, whether online or offline, can collect user data only if the user consents to share their data with the company in question. This might sound great to you as the user of so many free online services, but there is one big flaw in most privacy laws which is mostly overlooked by everyone and it is this flaw on which most free online services companies capitalize on. The flaw Even though the privacy laws in most countries clearly state that any company cannot collect user data without the consent from the end user or customer. These laws in most countries are either vague or completely overlook the process that a company needs to follow to get user consent for collecting the data. Most free online services companies capitalize on this flaw in the laws and get user consent for data collection in too many indirect and borderline legal ways. This worked really well for companies for a long time. But as more and more users became aware of this fact and became more and more conscious about their online activities, it forced companies to come clean about their user data collection and usage policies and forced them to overhaul their entire user consent process in order to satisfy user demand for increased transparency over user data collection and its use. One company that took this change in user behavior and expectations to their heart and completely overhauled their user consent policies was Apple and Apple's sudden change of heart to win over their new age customers caused too many problems for other companies that rely on the Apple platform to reach their customers or users per se. The bearer of bad news Until early 2021, Apple collected a blanket consent of sorts from their users for sharing their data with all the apps and services hosted on their platforms such as iOS and Mac OS. But in early 2014, Apple changed this with the rollout of iOS 14 and made it mandatory for each and every app on their platform to take user consent for collecting and using their data. As a result of this policy change, all iOS users could all of a sudden decide about whether they want to share their data with each app on their phone or not. The Disadvantage the sudden change in Apple's privacy and user data collection policies had an unintended effect on a lot of apps on iOS platform. But one company that was impacted the most was Facebook. To their surprise, when given a choice, majority of Facebook users chose not to share their data with FB which severely impacted their ability to show targeted ads to the users and that in turn had a huge effect on their ad revenues. Since ad revenue was the main source of income for Facebook, the fall in ad revenue had a huge negative impact on the company's financials, which in turn affected the share price which literally went into a free fall for some time. This left Facebook in a very precarious situation 
and all their attempts to successfully come out of the situation, including suing Apple, yielded no positive outcome. This forced Facebook to look for other ways to make money. The way out. After they failed to find any realistic way to come out of the precarious situation that Apple put them in, Facebook realized the cons of relying on someone else's platform to reach users and decided to build their own platform so that they will not be at someone else's mercy to reach and monetize their users. Most business gurus agree that this was the correct thing to do under the circumstances in which Facebook found itself at that point in time. But what most business gurus do not fully agree on is about the platform that Facebook chose as to build their way out of their bad situation and all the things that Facebook did after that. The miscalculation Once they decided to build their own future-proof platform, Facebook ran with that idea and zeroed in on Metaverse as their platform of choice that they would want to build and even rename the company as Meta. Even though this pivot seemed like the best decision for Facebook back in the day, in the second quarter of 2023, when we are making this video, most business experts agree that Facebook's entry into the metaverse was not well thought out and was rushed. They were in such a rush to build their own platform that they did not put in enough time into researching what the users actually wanted and instead unilaterally focused on what they thought was good for the users. This gross miscalculation only worsened the situation further and led to more losses in terms of both money and reputation for the company. And just when everyone thought that the situation could not become any worse for Facebook, Apple was preparing to put the final nail in the Facebook's coffin. Existential Crisis In June 2023, Apple launched a mixed reality headset called Vision Pro. And as per the most tech YouTubers who got a chance to try it, have said that Vision Pro was undoubtedly the best mixed reality headset out there. Unlike Meta, Apple spent several years in understanding the customer expectations and launched a solid product. While Meta focused on building their metaverse as the social network of the future where people connect and meet and greet each other in a virtual world, Apple has positioned Vision Pro as an all-in-one device that can be used for both work and play. In fact, Vision Pro is a laptop and a phone and a TV and a 2D come 3D camera and a high-end music system combined into one device. Apple didn't just stop at that and the display resolution of Vision Pro has at least 20 times more pixel density than even the best VR, AR or mixed reality headset that is currently available in the market. Most of all, Vision Pro doesn't require any controllers to operate it and instead can be operated using one's eyes, hands and voice. Unlike Meta's vision of Metaverse, there is no concept of or need of any avatars for using Vision Pro, which completely eliminates any associated risks such as identity theft, which could be a real problem if Meta actually ends up making photorealistic 3D avatars a thing. In short, using Vision Pro feels more like an extension of the real world due to its intuitiveness and ease of use. As some of you might have understood by now, Vision Pro is literally going to decimate all other AR, VR and mixed reality companies out there. Since Meta is the largest amongst them, they literally face an existential crisis due to Vision Pro. The intention. After seeing how Apple's changes to their privacy policies first ruined Facebook's ad business and then when Facebook was trying to mitigate the situation by pivoting into Metaverse, Apple launched Vision Pro and jeopardized their entire vision. At this point, it is completely human to think and feel that Apple is intentionally targeting and trying to destroy Facebook or Meta as they're called now. But once you take a step back and look at the situation as a neutral bystander, it looks more like as if Meta was just at a wrong place at a wrong time. Because the rumors of Apple working on building a mixed reality headset have been doing the rounds on the internet since many years before Meta announced their plans to diversify into the Metaverse. Similarly, Apple's new privacy policy is a blanket policy that is applicable to all apps on iOS and not just to Facebook. And the very fact that Facebook is the worst affected due to this policy tells more about the lack of people's trust in Facebook than it tells us about Apple's malicious intentions if any. Moreover, in today's world, the playing field is leveled and only the best products and services win. Facebook was the winner a decade ago, which they had the best product in the market and Apple is winning today because they have the best offering now 
and it might be a different company tomorrow if Apple doesn't manage to keep up. It's that plain and simple. And considering Apple's efforts to grow their own business as any attempt to negatively affect Meta doesn't seem to be the most sensible thing. Before we end this video, we would like to inform you all that no one in our team uses Apple products, nor we are Apple fanboys. As with all our other videos, we just tried our best to present a fact-based and neutral perspective on this topic and we are not biased towards Meta or Apple and we did our best to only present the truth. Thanks for watching and see you all again in the next video.